Hey Jake, uh, it's Whiteboarding Wednesday once again, although it's actually uh, Whiteboarding Thursday. We had kind of a lot going on yesterday, so we didn't get a chance to put our video up, but I'll make sure it gets out today on Whiteboard Thursday. Uh, <laughs> I wanted to talk a little bit today, uh, last time we talked about storage and kind of how storage is used in the cloud uh, and, and the way it's architected in a VMware environment. And uh, you know that is kind of one of the benefits of cloud computing is that you can expand and scale on the fly. And not just uh, storage, right? You can actually scale computing power and, and the RAM that's, that's used uh, in any virtual environment. So I was hoping you could talk a little bit about that, uh, tell the people watching Whiteboard Wednesday or Whiteboard Thursday uh, kind of some of the benefits of cloud and, and the way that we do that here at Blue Lock. Okay, so one of the main concerns with um, enterprise, enterprises coming to cloud computing is, are the dedicated resources. So a lot of companies have concerns that when they're putting their servers in the cloud that they're not going to have those dedicated resources they're going to have to share with somebody else and fight fight for contention basically um, enterprise cloud computing companies mitigate that by selling not only virtual machines but a resource pool as well okay. so that resource pool is dedicated to that particular enterprise so if we uh, come to the whiteboard here, I, I draw a lot in layers, so we're going back to that hardware layer. Some cloud computing companies, I would say lower than the enterprise grade, um, will do what they call oversubscribing. Okay. So what they'll do is they'll cram as many virtual machines onto the hardware as they can at one time, betting on the fact that not every virtual machine or client on that hardware will use all 100% resources all the time. And they may even look at trending graphs and decide to put different virtual machines on hardware depending on, on kind of the graph. It's kind of the same scheme as in the old world, right? They would have one server and they would cram a bunch of different people on a shared hosting package and uh, oversubscribe them. Is it sort of the same idea? Yeah, kind of the same thing. So if you've got uh, a you know two different applications that are that are running it in, at different times or in different patterns or whatever, it, it makes sense to kind of utilize that in that way. Uh, with enterprise cloud computing, you have dedicated resources. So in that oversubscription, you know, we've got we've got these virtual machines that may go way past what the hardware is capable of doing at 100%. With enterprise cloud computing like Blue Lock, your hardware, there's actually a resource pool sitting on top of that. And this is dedicated to the enterprise or the client. Okay. So the client then is free to oversubscribe as much as they want in that pool, but they have the benefit of knowing that these resources are always dedicated to them. Okay. So what does that mean to them? Performance goes up, right? Absolutely. So if if they have if they have a, a SQL server or a web server that they absolutely need to have that priority for, we can even create subpools in there to say, even though even though I have resources for these guys, I want this guy to have priority over those resources. Okay. So we can get really granular about how we, how we allocate those resources. And it's a huge benefit to the enterprise. Okay. So, so when you talk about uh, the resource pool, what kind of makes up the resource pool? So the resource pool is in two parts. We have CPU and we have memory. Okay. So, um, with Blue Lock, we, we typically sell 2x4 uh, cores. We call them cores. I don't know if that's the, the right way to say it, but, you know, cloud computing is still young and we're still working on it. But, so we have this, we have this 2 gigahertz, that's in CPU for those non-geeks out there, and then we have 4 gigabytes of RAM. Okay. So you can run as many virtual machines as you want inside this, allocating you know, one CPU with one gig of RAM, or one CPU, I 
know this is really small and you can't read it, but um, we can probably make up a drawing later as kind of a companion. Sure. Talk about this. Uh, you can have two gigabytes of RAM. Uh, you can configure your virtual machines inside that resource pool however you want. Okay. Uh, we so two by four, two gigahertz, four gig of RAM increments, and you can go as big as you want. The nice thing about this, we can expand this on the fly. So if you add another virtual machine or you need more CPU and RAM on one of your virtual machines, we can expand this resource pool out and then we can add in more virtual machines or we can actually add another CPU and more RAM to your, to your virtual machines. Very cool. I, I think that gives us a lot of insight into this and, and one of the things that we touched on was kind of um, something I think we should have a dedicated Whiteboard Wednesday to is the idea of load balancing and, and how we can you know, kind of balance that resource pool across the virtual machines. But I think that gives uh, our viewers a little bit of something to think about. Uh, feel free to hit us up in the comments, uh, blog comments. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, comment there. Feel free to add our channel as well. And uh, we'll see you next Whiteboard Wednesday.